If you don't think you're good enough to create your own style, this channel's for you. We're all about easy upcycling ideas. Anyone can do this. This is so much fun. I gotta show this to you. Just before we get going, I went out with $5 to our local thrift store the other day. Didn't know what I would see, but they have this dollar rack. This is just beautiful. Look at the detail. And that ruffle. It's all on the sleeves here. Just love it. That was a dollar. What a great layering piece. It's all cotton, 100% cotton. When you spend a dollar and you get an item like this, you don't mind deconstructing it, finding new ways to upcycle it. This is what we love to do, and we're going to be showing a lot more about how you can take what's in your closet and upcycle it into something awesome. Imagine finding a two-piece suit. This is all for Heather. She's a very fortunate one. It's very hard to find men's pieces. <laughs> when you're thrifting. I find it's very difficult uh, to find something that I'm interested in in upcycling. I'm very happy to find pieces for Heather when, uh, when I am thrifting alone. But uh, this piece here, just she tried it on and it fits her great and she's thinking about using it for an upcycling project. And here, here's, the, uh, here's the skirt here. It's just amazing what you can get for a dollar sometimes. The more you get into upcycling too, the more you realize that it doesn't have to be the perfect suit. You can really do, do some adjustments and make it something amazing. Something that you might see on the runway. Now Heather went into a little bit of shock when she saw that I found this for her. But this is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Look at the purple. This is all wool. And I love the, it's a velvet, black, collar and it, it, it's very unique the design of it because it was I, I think it was made in Canada Montreal and it is definitely uh, I think it's from the 60s or 70s but the shoulders are really wide and they're really uh, puffed up here to hold the width so when you when you're broad shouldered like Heather is and you're wearing this it's got a really unique look to it and this is a uh, the, the buttons are, are all metal buttons, and they are quite something to look at. But it's just incredible. So, last but not least, all for $5, I found this other wool coat. And it was actually made by Eaton's, which was a company in Canada for, well, I think about 100 years, and it closed down in the 80s, I do believe. It has a beautiful, beautiful uh, lining in it. We're going to utilize those pieces into something special and show you in upcoming videos. Heather's had this book for a little while now. I wanted to share it with you. Fashion in the 90s, uh, Reinnovation and Restlessness. I found it quite inspiring. There's, there's a wide range of uh, creative exploration, definitely, that was being designed uh, in, in the 90s. Uh, Alexander McQueen, John Galliano, and Stella McCartney, you know, just to name a few, but you know, the list goes, it's, it's huge. And I always notice that there's always names that, are, that aren't on the list that, uh, you know, the unknowns that uh, um, create just amazing uh, fashion. You know, we all have this ability to, to really create something amazing, but it's always a funny thing when I look at uh, fashion, how, you know, fashion houses change over time and what, what, what look they had at one time might be totally different now but you know for me seeing this as Prada wow I, I, I really like the way the combination of the colors are here and that unison of of the print uh, that was uh, used whether it was the yellow or the that blue gray mixed with the green definitely like components of grunge and I think it's a wonderful thing today to be able to utilize into even though to me it started well before <laughs> the 90s even though that it's listed in here but it's fun to actually mix in parts of grunge into a dressier look uh, combining the two of them I really like that feel just love this look here wow just love that I love the print I like the mixture of fabrics really beautiful the material is a mixture of leather and it's hand painted and with denim and I'm not quite sure what the denim part is. It's nice to see uh, 
the painted. This might be my favorite out of all the images in the 90s. Uh, Alexander McQueen, uh, just love the mixture of pattern and silk. Oh my goodness. You have the tartan wool, the black silk satin, and black and white lace. Oh, I just love that. It's just such a, a unique, uh, it's such a beautiful piece. And then over here, and the queen uh, continues on with just, I love the embroidered. And this is what I'm talking about with her upcycling, finding these embroidered pieces and piecing them on. Uh, that's, it's just gorgeous. This image here, I just love the combination. You know, 90s was a little bit about minimalism. And this to me is, takes minimalism <laughs> and maximizes it. <laughs> You know, with those sleeves and the flow of the bottom, the purple, and the mixture of the green, oh, and the vibrance, the metallics mixed into the colors. It's just something. I just love that. Yeah, Christian Lacroix, I probably pronounced it noon proper, but... Well, the 90s wouldn't be anything without uh, Vivian Westwood. And to me, this is... Uh, Vivian at her peak. That's just me, humbly speaking, looking at these images. I just love it. Oh, but you know, there's a lot of great pieces. And then this is Vivian's. Uh, I, I, I really like just showing how, how you can take a basically a track jacket, red rayon satin, and white burlap. I really like that, that look. So this is an exciting, easy project. You can either use scissors or a circular cutter. Heather had a $2 pair of leather pants that she bought thrifting, and she was very excited. She got them home. They didn't have a change room there, and she was thinking it would they would fit her, but they didn't quite fit her the way she wanted to. So this is a great opportunity to be able to take these and turn them into something special. First of all, what I want to do is make sure that these are shape that I want them to be. Uh, I want to have the same length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just make sure that I'm like, liking the way that they're cut across. Since this is the easiest end to start with because it's straight across, I'm just going to go ahead and hold this tight with a metal ruler. And I'm just going to run my, just nice and slow, see if I got everything off. Good, I got a perfect cut. So that's one done. And I'm just looking to keep it basically straight up and down here, the pant leg. As you can see, it's pretty straight there with this line. And I've got this point coming in here, so I'm just going to move this out a little bit. The same angle. And then we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom here. Taking off the smallest amount that I can possibly take off. I'm pushing down pretty hard with the cutter. You could mark this with a pastel and use scissors if you wanted to instead. This is great because it gets one cut and you're done. So that's perfect. So now what I'll do is I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to line these up. And I'm just going to go ahead and see on top how they match up. So I've got it lined up on one end, and I'm just double checking here, making sure that everything looks pretty good. Now this is a little bit more difficult when you're doing a curved and you're doing uh, multiple fabric layers of fabric. So you're just doing the best you can to be able to get the shape you want. Um, you have to be really careful with this cutter because it is sharp <laughs> and it will cut you if you get too close. So um, I'm just kind of trimming up a little bit of the edges and not worrying about perfection. Yeah, I like the idea that imperfection is perfection. <laughs> I know it's hard to, to grasp that concept, but it really is true. When you, The more you do this, the more you realize that slight imperfections. When you do a painted portrait and it's realism, it kind of looks like a photograph, but it has adjustments where one eye, they might make it much bigger than another eye, but it makes it actually look more real. 
And it's kind of funny how that, that goes, you know. These adjustments to imperfections actually can make things truly look more perfect. We're going to paint these. Heather would like to have this, a mixture of gold and silver together. And what that's going to do is that's going to thicken up the leather. Okay, it's not going to make it as, as loose. Right now, that's a great thing because we want to actually get a little bit more of a firm form to this not so flimsy because we are going to be able to try to put them on the legs and hold them up over the knee so they'll actually keep the form. So you can slip these on any outfit and really uh, style them up. So I'm just going to use a little bit of deco art metallic silver acrylic paint, American decor, deco art, and this is also acrylic. I shook this up good. I'm not going to use any textile medium because uh, this is leather. I'm not going to be throwing it in the washing machine. This here is a two inch brush and this is just a dollar store brush. It's just cheap white hairs. I'm going to do a couple coats on this, okay? So right now I'm just going to rub on. I just want to show you how quick this goes, okay? Because this is such a flimsy uh, material and I really want to get a super thin coat. I'm not zigzagging my brush like this with this time. I'm just holding the material down and I'm just going to go ahead and put on a real thin coat like that. It takes seconds to do this. So if you guys want a real simple project, it's just amazing. And then I just give it a light hair dry and then as soon as I do that I'll go and do the other side. Make sure it's on thin. Don't worry about it covering well, okay? Thin layers are what actually makes it not crack. You can do so many amazing projects with, with acrylic paints. A wonderful thing to invest in. I just wanted to show you this. So here's uh, some pints of paint. And I actually was running out. Uh, I usually buy in gallon size, but I wanted to show you this. So you can buy this for about $10 a container. And this will last you a super long time. But it's a high-end acrylic paint that actually holds up wonderfully indoors and outdoors. Okay, so it's going to do really good on your clothing. And if you went to the craft store and you bought acrylic paint, you'd probably pay about the same amount for a way lesser size. So this is, you know, it's amazing how getting, getting this much paint for for that. And so what I do is I get the primary colors made up and you could just ask them to do this. I imagine any paint store around the world will do this for you. Just ask them to do a pure red, pure blue and a pure yellow um, acrylic paint for you. And this is this is actually pure red. I'm going to open this up and show you. Now these containers are kind of awkward to actually use back and forth all the time. So what I'm doing is I'm repurposing. So I took these honey containers that I have. Uh, we like a little bit of honey. We like to try to re reuse as many of these items as possible if we are buying a little bit of honey and it comes in a plastic container um, or a glass container and it's got a really good lid on it which this one does with the right size hole for paint to come out. So and it snaps shut so I can actually pour the paint into this and we can use these as our paint containers. So we'll just go ahead and do the other side now. Same same method. Just kind of pulling the paint out and just get it nice and thin. We love sharing easy projects that really make bring that wow factor to your wardrobe. It's really exciting to see what you can do in just a matter of minutes. I, I, I love that reward of being able to do something really quick and then I'll say, wow, I got that. And that, really? I only had to do that much work to be able to do it? Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, everybody can get involved in upcycling. This uh, little pooch <laughs> here decided to wrap himself around in fabric. Well, I like your look today. It's wonderful, yes. This is the choir robe that uh, we've thrifted. I've been trying to think of what to do with it, and Dave just reminded me how much I like ruching, so why not ruch it? 
So we've kind of just pinned it up in different areas to get an idea of what look we want. Oh, this is fun, Heather. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you did the arms, and I was just like, yep. It was uh, absolutely one of those things. This is so much fun to be able to take a choir outfit. And you know you love the material, you love the colors, um, and there's a lot of aspects about it that I love, but I didn't want it to look like a choir robe. Uh, and leaving the sleeves as they were kind of still looked like a choir robe to me. So changing them up and then changing the shape. And I may do something with the, with the um, collar area, but I could always put something just over it. Like, you know, it's a very fragile material actually, and there was quite a bit of damage to it. So the ruching will hide some of it. Yeah, that's what I love. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun, Heather. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. And I imagine there's quite a few of these around, uh, <laughs> around that are, are going into the landfill. So this is a really cool way to keep yeah. them out. and Anything that you can thrift and upcycle and use, you know, um, if it has a purpose for you, it's a wonderful thing. So this is the skirt. And it's finished because uh, I think I'm going to keep it just fastened with a kilt pin. So it used to be just a blanket. Yeah. And you cut it and kind of shaped it into this kind of a long rectangle, really. Yeah. And when it wraps around, it's very asymmetrical, and I love that. I mean, you could wear it in a few different ways, actually. And then I just decided to, I blanket stitch the edges. I still have to weave in some of the threads, but... Um, I put on some pockets. I love these pockets. And it was just kind of carefully seam ripping wow. out squares, granny squares from the blanket and then knitting a scalloped edge around it. And I chose orange. I kind of like that. I like the orange color. I like the threading on the bottom that you added. Thanks. That's the blanket stitch. Yeah. I started with red and I didn't have a thicker red, so then I tried the blue. And I'll just wear it probably over leggings, or you could wear it over shorts. That's fun. Really? Yeah. Anything. Do you like it with the shirt? I do. I, I do I like too. The pink with it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great outfit. And then, wow, talk about what you put up here. <laughs> well, I love a corsage, a flower corsage with the pearls. That's kind of one of my favorite looks. And I had this pink. Uh, fake flower and you see them all the time at the thrift stores and I'm always kind of attracted to them. I wanted to add something less I guess plasticky or fake looking so I put in this little I knit this little flower here in this um, actually I thrifted this yarn it's kind of fuzzy and yeah it's sparkly beautiful. yeah it's kind of this pink pink and oranges I think are in it and then this one I did spin myself and added a little sparkle. And then I knitted this little trim. You actually suggested that I add something darker to the edges. And I think it was a great idea. And then I added this little bead to the center. I had a whole bag of them that I thrifted, actually. I have a bunch of those little beads. That's awesome. But they make a great little center yeah. to a flower. Yeah. Such an yeah. unusual uh, mixture of items that you have here yeah. and it's it's really fun these are like a, that five dollar crochet blanket you know and li little items that you find to make uh, a flower uh it, it's just amazing how well, it is nice because sometimes you see something and maybe it gets a hole in it maybe one of the granny squares had a hole and you kind of think oh what am i going to do with that but to to save it and be able to reuse it especially if somebody uh, that you cherish made this for you you know, it's a nice way to preserve their memory. This is the third coat on here. When you're painting uh, clothes, sometimes you only need one coat. Sometimes you need two. Mostly, most of the times you need two. But once in a while, you need to do three coats uh, and, and even four. But this is three coats, and that should do it for the leather. And we're going to put this on a mannequin and uh, style them up. When you're painting the leather, um, I suggest to make sure that you let the paint dry very well in between each layer. Even though I might hair dry this, it's ideally best to be able to leave it for three or four hours before you apply the second and third coat. The reason for this is on most leather, I'll actually give a light sanding to it 
and that'll create tooth, a little bit of a, a rough edge to allow the paint to adhere better. But this is a super soft leather and I didn't want to be able to actually sand it. Uh, I wanted it to stay smooth because it's such a smooth surface. It, it needs a little bit longer drying time to be able to stay on and before you put the next coat. Otherwise, you can actually peel off the, the original coat when you're, when you're uh, going to apply your second coat. That's something you just have to try to be a little bit careful with. This feels a little awkward. <laughs> I'm holding her up. <laughs> and I love the way this turned out. You know when you have something in your mind and you're never sure if it's really going to look the way you think it is? Yeah. Well, this looks even better. It oh. surpassed my expectations. I absolutely love the way it looks together. And if you can lift up the skirt a bit, I know, it sounds rude, but those are the pants that I just recently thrifted. And the waist fit me okay and through the hips, but the legs were shorter and they were smaller so I had to uh, stitch rip them a little bit in the inside and I kind of just like them that way with a slit in them and I'll just wear them kind of under something like that. I may not need to wear anything under it either I'm not sure like you could probably just get away with biker shorts and maybe some you know I'd probably wear nylons or something and I like I actually even like the boots with them I wasn't sure about the boots because it is a different pink um, and I really, I didn't have any other boots. I wanted to have something high, like a platform. And those were the closest that I could get to kind of match it up. And I, I think it looks really good. What yeah, do you think? Yeah, I do too. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to styling this up myself. I mean, that is great. And I, I really like the way they're kind of open at the top. I was wondering how that would be, like if they would slouch down more, but I guess you don't really know until I start walking in them, but. If they do slouch down, we can actually put in a material that dress. to actually build the strength of the actual leather so it holds in place and just glue it on the inside. Okay. It really is amazing. And I had these pants I think I got them for $2 and I, there was no change room. I thought they might fit, but I wasn't sure and they didn't quite fit. So I thought, well, I'll use them and upcycle them. And then our daughter kind of used the bottom part for a cosplay. Yeah. So then I was kind of like, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. And it's amazing what you can do. Just cutting the legs off. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs>